Welcome, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. Wow, I actually start right on time. Okay, good, good for me. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. Um, I didn't do a live stream this Saturday. I was taking a little break uh, as I had worked very hard to update my website. So if you have time, you can go to laysrealtalk.com um, to check it out. I have posted, I have redesigned the website by separating the contents um, by topics. And I also added uh, blog articles. So uh, check it out. Um, and and I, um, I didn't include the short videos there. And uh, and also, I think I updated the section where I talked about my my team, uh, the people who, who are helping me. So I, I'm very excited about my new website because I put in, you know, we put in so much time into updating it. So I hope it's worthwhile. All right. Um, so I haven't done a live stream since last Thursday, and it's been five days. And my goodness, there's so many um, update uh, related to CCP politics, right? The the week, the last week, we heard China's defense minister, Li Shangfu, was missing. And now, as I have been following, you know, the personnel drama, shall we say, and more names have appeared, more questions are out there about where these individuals are. So tonight we will talk about a list of officials who either have been removed or are in the process of, um, um, I, uh, what, what should I say? Well, I, I think Xi Jinping has been playing this missing minister game <laughs> with his officials. So since Qinggang, uh, his disappearance in July, we've seen a whole series of civilian uh, and about uh, both civilian and military leaders absent. So they're either removed from investigation or temporarily suspended. Um, some we know and some we don't. The most recent one, of course, is Li Shangfu. And last week, three out of the seven, the seven member of the Central Military Commission uh, were missing from a key PLA event. So other than Xi Jinping, right, there are the six other there are six other members, and three of them, half of them, were missing from a key event. And these are all people who Xi Jinping trusts because he installed them in, in their current position. So today we'll go over a list of them. Um, we'll first talk about the civilian officials, and then we'll talk about the military officers. So the first person on our list, I have I have a slide. Ooh. Well, this is a, I found this slide from ABC Australia. They, they did this and I found it interesting. So they have missing, missing, deceased, um, and then removed. Obviously, there are more people removed from this list. The, I think you probably recognize them all. Um, yeah, the, the one, the, the, the lower center person is the, uh, commander of the rocket force and the one on his uh, on his left and to to my right uh, I mean to the right from from my angle Zhang Zheng, Zhang Zheng Zhong, uh, was a former deputy uh, rocket force commander so but but the list list of people removed are far from the six here okay so the pr first person we want to talk about who appears to be in trouble is Wang Yi China's foreign minister. Here's a picture of him with national security advisor Jake Sullivan in Malta this this Monday. Was it yesterday? Malta. And this is his first appearance since he's been missing from a number of major diplomatic events. So he did not show up at G20 in India. He also um, wasn't going to the UN meeting in New York. So he is said to have upset Xi Jinping in South Africa when attending the BRICS summit. Remember the video I played a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, that shows how Xi Jinping was walking towards the, 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 uh, the summit when his interpreter was pushing, was pushed aside by the security guard at the door 
And then Xi Jinping looked confusing while walking down the red carpet, and that video went viral. So multiple sources have pointed out that Wang Yi was blamed for that incident as the foreign minister, and Cai Qi, Xi Jinping's housekeeper, um, in the name so Cai, in the name of CCP Central Committee's secretariat, criticized Wang for the mistake he made in arranging Xi Jinping's foreign events. And Wang was subsequently ordered to stay at home to write his repentance statement. I don't know if I don't think Western officials have this thing called repentance statement, but in in China they do. You basically need to write a statement to say, you know, to state all the mistakes、um, that you made, and you know, it's a letter, it's a statement to ask for forgiveness. Uh, Yuan Hongbing, the Chinese dissident and former law professor at Beijing University, who I have featured、um, many times before in my channel, he was also the the drinking buddy with Xi Jinping. He、uh, said in a media interview on the 18th, which was yesterday, that Wang wrote a very remorseful letter in which he severely criticized himself.、Um, And so, basically, he brutally、uh, tear him, tore himself apart in the letter, and thus passed the review session. Right. So, if he didn't tear himself apart,、um, he probably, you know, couldn't pass this. But, anyways, he passed it,、um, and here he was meeting Jake Sullivan in Malta. Um, on his way to Russia for a security meeting, so that's civilian official number one, and s- official number two is here Wang Xiaohong, the man who is in charge of public security for Xi Jinping. He's the Minister of Public Security. He's a close ally of Xi Jinping, but he、uh, has been recently relieved of three important roles. Hold on. First, he is no longer. He is no longer the head of the Special Services Bureau.、Uh, in Chinese, it's called 特勤局 Now, the Special Service or Special Services, maybe it's plural. I think it's singular. The Special Service Bureau and the Central Security Bureau、um, are similar.、Um, In that they both are responsible for protecting top leaders, but their roles are different. The Central Security Bureau is managed by the General Office of the CCP's Central Committee, and it protects the seven highest-ranking CCP officials, meaning the seven、um, standing committee members of the Politburo.、Um, it's also responsible for protecting the leadership compound, Zhongnanhai.、Uh, That's the Central Security Bureau. Now, the Sur- Special Service Bureau is under the Ministry of Public Security, and is is responsible for protecting the leaders at the level lower than the seven top guys. So they are responsible for protecting the Vice President of China, the Vice Chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, the Vice Premiers, the President of the Supreme Court, as well as foreign dignitaries visiting China. Excuse me, Anita. So that that title, that job responsibility, was removed from him. And the second role that he was relieved of is the the position, which is the president of the National Public Security Association. And the third move that affects him is. His longtime associate,、um, who is also the vice minister of public security, his name is Liu Zhao. Liu Zhao, Liu Zhao, was dismissed on September thirteenth.、Um, the guy is not even sixty years old. I think he will be sixty by the end of the year.、Um, so he's below official retirement age, and some say that Liu was taken away for investigation. Now, <clears throat> usually when 
uh, when an official is before an official's downfall, his lieutenants are usually being investigated and taken away. So these three uh, responsibility chain changes or job changes related to Wang Xiaohong are alarms signaling the loss of trust uh, by Xi Jinping. And this is very uh, unusual because he was chosen precisely because Xi Jinping trusts, trusted him to play that role. But uh, many people believe that something has happened. And um, so we don't know what will happen to this guy going forward. Okay, so we talked about the two civilian um, leaders. Now let's talk about the PLA leaders. That's more fascinating and eventful. So here you know who this guy is. That's Li Shangfu, the defense minister who the world is concerned about, right? It's the second missing minister after Qin Gang. Uh, his case is related to the rocket force. We know the entire leadership of the rocket force has been removed for investigation. And this includes not just current commander, deputy commander, and commissar, uh, but also some past ones. And I, I won't elaborate on that because we've discussed this before. Now, let's talk about how the rocket force got itself into trouble or how the trouble started. Um, it has to do with the secretary of its commander. So the commander Li Yuchao, uh, whose picture, whose picture I had showing you, um, never mind, it, it doesn't matter. But basically, the secretary of the rocket force commander Li Yuchao has spied on his boss and turned him in. Um, Yuan Hongbin, uh, again, the guy who uh, who is the Chinese dissident living in the Chinese law professor living in Australia, said on September 14th, that he had learned from knowledgeable sources in Beijing that the root cause of the purge of the rocket force was that the entire leadership was two-faced, um, and so is the defense minister. What that means is that, and uh, Yuan, Prof Professor Yuan quoted sources as saying that the leadership of the rocket force agrees um, in their heart. They agree with General Liu Yazhou's view. You know, General Liu Yazhou is the um, the prolific military writer who is uh, um, who is the the son-in-law of of the one of the former China, uh, Chinese president Li Xianyan. And he's being arrested, right, for causing trouble, for having different views with um, uh, from Xi Jinping. So basically, the leadership of the rocket force agrees with General Liu Yazhou's view that PLA's defeat would be a highly probable event if a war were to be waged in the Taiwan Strait. But in front of Xi Jinping, they pledged loyalty and gave their resolute support for Xi Jinping's war plans. Privately, they continue to make negative comments about war uh, with against Taiwan and the United States. Um, and their activities and remarks in private were reported to Xi Jinping by Commander Li Yuchao's secretary. Now, Yue Hongbin also said that the whistleblower in the rocket force also reported um, a close relationship between the rocket force leaders and the defense minister Li Shangfu because Li Shangfu came from the rocket force. He was um, he was in charge of one of the satellite center. I think it was the Xichang satellite centers for 10 years. And prior becoming the, the commander of the satellite center, he had worked there for 20 years. So, so he had a long history with the rocket force. So they're they're all very familiar with each other. So, but Li Shangfu is known for his hardline position, right? Hawkish hardline position on the issue of war with Taiwan and the United States. Um, 
But in reality, he privately agrees with the rocket force leadership that a war should be avoided. So after this was revealed to Xi Jinping, he was very upset because he calls his、um, minister and his officials two-faced people. Now, Li Shangfu's problem、um, isn't isn't just because he's two-faced. He's also tied to the recent submarine accident because he was previously the chief of. Um, the Central Military Commission's Equipment Development Department, right? That department is in charge of the weaponry,、um, you know, military technologies and and so on.、Um, so now let me talk about the submarine accident. So according to、um, former PLA Navy officer Yao Chen, who said on September fifteenth in an interview that an explosion in the Yellow Sea.、Uh, Was not true.、Uh, it can be ruled out. He said that if it did happen, the PLA would send a large number of、uh, salvage salvage ships to block the area.、Um, he said that a U.S. nuclear reconnaissance plane plane did flew did、uh, fly over the waters, but no nuclear contamination was detected. I'm trying to catch my breath. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Oh, <clears throat> I think I have worked too hard. I need to take another break. Okay, I'm trying to catch my breath. He said the vessel.、Um, he said the vessel that had an accident、uh, did not explode, did not suffer an explosion, but it was a, a domestically made nuclear submarine that had quality problems.、Um, he said the type. Zero nine three submarine is the CCP's second generation nuclear submarine, and its performance is not good. <clears throat> He heard that the air circulation system in the submarine had a problem, and the vessel might have been forced to conduct an emergency emergency surfacing, you know, go above the water, but somehow somewhere. You know something went wrong, so he said this is a training accident, and it's not. There is no explosion. Some you know the air circulation system had a problem.、Uh, we also heard from the Chinese social media posts that talked about how the you know based on autopsies they conducted on the on the bodies of the of the、uh, deceased officers.、Um, In the submarine, they 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 were poison poisoned to death by what do you call hydrogen sulfide poisoning? Yeah, so obviously there was some kind of air circulation prob problem. It was not an explosion.、Um, and he said he also Yao Chen also said the submarine incident has made Wang Wang Da Chen. Now here's the submarine picture. Here's this guy. Wang Dazhong, sorry, Wang Dazhong, who is the Navy commander of the Northern Theater、um, Command,、uh, so he became the target, the Navy commander of the Northern Theater Command, who is on on this picture, and he is accused of ineffective governance, but Wang blamed the Equipment Development Department, saying saying that the submarine had a hardware failure. Uh, or was poorly designed in the first place, and that he said that the equipment development department should be responsible. Guess who's who was responsible for the equipment development department? Li Shangfu, right, the missing minister. And so he said he has Yao Chen said that he has received information that Wang, this Commander Wang,、uh, is. Is somehow in a legal in a lawsuit against the equipment、um, development department and the manufacturer of the of the vessel, arguing that the manufacturer should be held responsible for the quality of the submarine.、Um, so, the Central Military Commission is investigating the equipment development department.、Um, 
Um, and Li Shangfu, as the head of the department from 2017 to 2022, you know, is is being investigated, and that contributes to his missing. Uh, okay, so I've talked about Wang Yi. I've talked about uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Public Security. I talked about uh, the reason why Li Shangfu, the Minister of Defense, is missing. I talked about the accident, the reason uh, behind the submarine accident. Now let's talk about the two most important military, uh, uh, two generals that Xi Jinping trusts that many say uh, can be in trouble. So now let's talk about, guess who? Zhang Yuxia, who is a very important Xi Jinping ally. He's a member of the Politburo and Xi Jinping's vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. Uh, he's actually he's this, actually the second highest ranking PLA uh, uh, general under Xi Jinping, right? So he's the highest ranking uh, officer under Xi Jinping. He's in a very delicate position, uh, situation with Xi Jinping. Now, he has a personal tie to Xi Jinping because it goes back, their relationship goes back to their fathers who fought during the Civil War together. And Zhang himself is a princeling. Uh, so he has been, all these years, has been handling the PLA personnel issues for Xi. He's uh, in charge of the promotions. So you can, you can argue that he is, or he was, probably Xi Jinping's most trusted person in the PLA. Now, on September 15th, Together with the missing defense minister, Zhang missed an important PLA event uh, that's about educating the PLA about the Xi, uh, what do you call that? Xi Jinping thought, right? The whole, this whole Xi Jinping's political theories are, are summarized as the Xi Jinping thought. And so there was an event that, that, that it's an educational event to, to create awareness for PLA um, on, on Xi Jinping's thought. His name, Zhang Yuxia's name, did not appear in Xinhua news agent's press report. Um, he and Li Shangfu were both missing at that event. Now, Zhang Yuxia and Li Shangfu have unusual close relations too. Zhang was Li's mentor and he promoted him along the way to replace him. So, so when Zhang left the position of, as the head of the Equipment Development Department in 2017, he promoted Li to, to fill that position, to replace him. So he has been kind of you know promoting Li along the way. Um, so the two are unusually close. Uh, and according to multiple media reports, I'm, I'm talking about Chinese language media outside China. After Li Shangfu was detained, the, the defense minister, he confessed and turned in at least eight other generals. Some reports say 17. Um, <clears throat> I'll just be conservative and say eight. <clears throat> Here's the question. Was Zhang Yuxia, his mentor, one of the eight people he turned in? Um, many observers say Zhang Yuxia has been quiet lately. You don't see him very often. Um, so we don't know what will happen to him. Will he be, you know, if you really think about the corruption in the CCP, he cannot get away. You know, there's no way... He was not involved in any of the corruption cases um, that has contributed to the failure of these PLA equipment or submarines or other 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 um, other equipment and and weapon weaponries. So you know, there's no way he could get away with that, right? Um, and the corruption corruption is systemic. So he is in hot water because um, 
not only because he was responsible for the equipment development department, but most importantly, every one of the PLA generals that Xi Jinping is investigating now was vouched by Zhang Youxia because he handled all the personnel promotions for Xi. So how can he explain this? How can he explain to Xi Jinping that so many of the officers that he recommended to Xi Jinping for promotion are now all in trouble? You know, they obviously not only are, I mean, they have loyalty issues from Xi Jinping's perspective because they're two-faced. They say one thing and then do another. So his relation with Xi Jinping is in a very delicate situation now. Um, many people believe that Xi Jinping probably would not investigate Zhang or remove him because that would be too, I think it, it really hurts both. It hurts Xi Jinping's own um, reputation and image because this is his you know, most trusted person. So he, people say he may just let him retire very soon because he is 72 years old. Um, so, but I think the the military career that this gentleman has in this picture is going to end pretty soon. Okay, now let me talk about another general because at that event, the September 15th um, PLA training event to create awareness on Xi Jinping's political theories, there's a third general who was missing and that was very shocking to many people. And this is the youngest general, three-star general um, that the PLA has. So his name is Liu Zhengli. He is one of the seven, he's a member of the seven-person Central Military Commission and currently the chief of staff of the commission's joint staff department. He also failed to attend the September 15th meeting. Um, now, back in July, uh, Li Shangfu and Zhang Youxia missed another all hands meeting. That was on July 20, uh, I think it was July 20th and 21st. So the pair, uh, the, the, the two former heads of the equipment development department, Zhang Youxia and Li Shangfu, were both absent, absent from that meeting, but Liu, this guy you see on the screen, was there. He was present at that July meeting. So this is the first time he is missing from an important PLA meeting. Now, General Liu was, um, made his first appearance as the chief of staff of the Joint Staff Department this March. So he was recently promoted He's the youngest general in the PLA and one of the few generals with combat ex experience. And his promotion has been steady and his future seemed promising. Uh, at the age of 22, he participated in the war against Vietnam in 1986 and was awarded first class war merit. So uh, I think he was regarded as one of the more capable uh, wartime generals in in the PLA system, uh, which PLA doesn't have many. Uh, I think in, in the military commission, him and Zhang Youxia are the two generals who have war wartime experience. So that's a shocking to many people. So whether or not something has happened to him is inconclusive as this is the first time that we notice his absence. But if something has happened to him, it suggests that the problem within the PLA is much worse than we has known. Uh, and the scale of the internal purging that Xi Jinping is doing could be, um, uh, is much wider than we think. Okay, so now let me give you my analysis. So if you look at all, all the problems that we discussed, there's one commonality, lack of trust, right? So all these individuals, uh, with the exception of uh, generally of the last person we talked about, because we don't know what his problem was, but most everyone had loyalty issue. 
um, and from Xi Jinping's perspective, they have not been honest with him. You know, they are what he calls the two-faced people. Uh, and but if you really think, the root problem of that is his officials and military officers don't believe in the CCP ideas and systems anymore. Uh, but they're forced to say that they do um, because they don't want to lose their job. That's the problem. It's not these people's for fault. It's not like these people intentionally want to lie to him. From his perspective, they lie to him. They're not trustworthy. But from my perspective, I think these people are just... They they just don't believe in the system. They don't believe in the CCP ideas or the ideology or whatever it represents. But they can't say it, or they will lose their job. Um, th that's really the biggest problem. And now, why do you think corruption is an epidemic in China, and particularly in the PLA? It's because people have nothing to believe in. They, you know, in under the CCP's rule, people have lost their sense of responsibility or even sense of honor in what they do. So many money becomes the only thing that's tangible and meaningful. And it's particularly bad in the PLA. And kickbacks are so common practice um, in defense contracts. And uh, I was just seeing some people saying that percentage is as high as 50%. What that means is um, if you have a, a defense contract that's worth, let's say, 1 million yuan, then another 1 million is added for kickback. And so the PLA is billed for 2 million. And it's not, and it doesn't, the problem doesn't exist for big projects. It's even very small projects um, have the same problem. And, there's, and, and it's even worse. So I saw someone mention a case. There was a 1,000 yuan worth of a printing job that the PLA did. And guess what? The person doing the print job asked the print shop to give them a receipt for 10,000 yuan. That's a 90% markup for, kick, for kickback. So, you know, people don't see any problem in that because their superiors all do it. Um, and, and there are other problems, like um, not just, you know, they cut corners, they use substandard suppliers and materials and components. There are just all sorts of problems. So Li Shangfu, Zhang Youxia, and the other generals in the PLA, they know how inferior the PLA equipment and weapons are due to corruption. I mean, they have seen that firsthand. Um, and it, it's not a problem when, you know, during Jiang Zemin's time or during Hu Jintao's time when they weren't talking about war. Um, so it wasn't a problem for them, right? They're not going to use these weapons. Um, um, and they're just pretending they're doing military exercises. Now, the problem started when... And this corruption problem wasn't, uh, wasn't new during Xi Jinping's time. I mean... PLA corruption started during when Xi Jinping, uh, when uh, Deng Xiaoping implemented economic reforms. I made a number of videos that talk about the military corruptions. So you could check them out. Maybe I'll ask my um, my editor Chris uh, if you are there. Um, please add the links to the description section so people can watch those videos afterwards. Um, yeah, so I talk. I have talked ex extensively about the military corruptions. So it has always existed. It wasn't a problem because they weren't serious about military exercise or war preparation. Now Xi Jinping is becoming serious about war, and PLA's accumulated problems attributed to corruption show up big time, right? So now these. PLA generals and officers are seriously concerned. And that's where their anti-war sentiment comes from because they know, <laughs> you know, they don't have the right equipment. Um, and Xi Jinping conducted the PLA military reform in 2015 with the idea to modernize the PLA and transition it from a, 
uh, transition the PLA from the defense force to a troop capable of engaging external war. Um, however, it's a big failure because the Chinese PLA serves the party and not the country, and therefore is inevitably demoralized internally um, in a brutal uh, internal power struggle. I talked about that in my series of video uh, about the military reforms. Again, um, you can check check them out. So it's impossible to build loyalty and trust in that organization. As long as the PLA serves the party, and as long as there are political cleansing, political struggles in the party, it's impossible for these people to be loyal to anyone because it's con they're constantly fighting, right? So the CCP ideology has completely collapsed in Chinese society, and and it's difficult even for his officers to have loyalty, to trust. If they don't, even if they want to trust, they can't. The entire system has collapsed, but Xi Jinping is still trying to save it. Um, so from his perspective, he thinks these officers are not loyal to him when they don't even know how to be loyal. They can be loyal. You know, I don't think these people mean to do any harm to Xi Jinping or to, to the regime, but just that's just the way things are in the PLA. Um, and Xi Jinping is, is too idealistic in his effort trying to save the CCP from corruption. That's just a mission impossible. So does this mean Xi Jinping will lose power or be overthrown very quickly by, by this pool of people who are... Uh, by this increase, the increasing amount of people who are getting more upset because of his brutal cleansing? Not necessarily. Uh, let me talk about the role secretaries play, because I did mention that uh, the, 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 the rocket force, one of the, the secretary of the rocket force commander turned him in. Uh, the, now, you, you should know that the secretaries of officers above the level of military theater command are approved by the office of the chairman of the Central Military Commission, which means that these secretaries were handpicked by Xi Jinping himself. And these people are his eyes and ears. So he will continue to rely on to keep an eye on his officers. Um, and recently, it was on September the 13th and 14th, a national conference attended by the, by, by the secretaries and secretary generals of the party committees uh, uh, within various levels of party committees um, in China, and also the secretaries within the various levels of government. There was a conference for all the secretaries <laughs> and secretary generals uh, in Beijing, and Xi Jinping gave important instructions. He didn't personally attend the meeting, but Cai Qi, his, um, his housekeeper, <laughs> his CCP housekeeper, not like, you know, housekeeper in his family, his party housekeeper, uh, who's also a member of the standing committee of the Politburo, attended the meeting uh, to convey Xi Jinping's instruction. Um, I think Xi Jinping has realized the important role the national secretary, I, I call this national secretarial core. They, I mean, this core plays in watching over the officials, right? Uh, civilian and also military. I think that conference was conducted with that purpose. Now, if you think about it, Xi Jinping started his career as, a, as the secretary uh, for the defense minister. That was his first job after college. And if you look at his Politburo Standing Committee members, some of them were his secretary, like um, uh, Premier Li Qiang was his secretary in Zhejiang, and Ding Xuexiang was his secretary in Shanghai. So secretaries are generally considered to be uh, the inner circle, uh, in the inner circle of a leader because they have they usually are very loyal to the leader. They have been with the leader for a long time. They are very powerful. Um, secretaries in CCP politics are extremely uh, powerful. So she, 
If Xi Jinping wants to prevent his officials and officers from revolting against him, he wants to uh, have better control of the secretaries. So he's reminding them that their official hats of the of the secretary are given by the central government and not by the uh, the official uh, that they serve. Um, so, okay, so I just give you a quick uh, rundown of the list of people who I think uh, are, you know, are in some type of um, uh, sensitive situation or are, 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 are in trouble to some extent. Um, and um, so that's, that's that. And that's all for tonight. Let me see what you if if people have any questions. Sorry, my th I, my throat is suffering from some kind of a <clears throat> situation, and it's hard for me to talk. Well, thank you everyone for your um, supportive messages. Good evening, everyone. Let me see if people have questions for me. Um, yeah, if you have questions for me, put, put my name in front so I know it's addressed to me. Uh, this is just my quick update of all the um, changes, right, in, in, in the CCP. You know, the shakers and movers of, within the CCP, um, the, up, the latest updates in the past week or so. So I just want to give you a quick update of what's coming. All right, let me see if people have questions for me. Uh, Mike Dixon, like, why do we hear so little from the United Nations about them trying to prevent international conflict? The UN seems very weak and ineffective. Yes, that's a true observation. But um, there were quite a number of heads of state who didn't attend the UN summit this week. Uh, a few European countries, I mean, China, Xi Jinping didn't come. So I think the UN, the role the UN can play. Well, people realize the CCP has uh, infiltrated the UN very uh, thoroughly. So why do you work with an organization that's severely influenced by Beijing, right? So I think the role the UN will play is getting smaller and smaller. All right, let me see. Okay. The, okay, from Nick Furry. How does she determine if statements of repent, re, repent, repentant, rep, repentance uh, is true and good enough? Are there special touches to make it more moving to she? Are you planning to write a, a repentance statement? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Or are you advising someone? Are you advising some CCP official who are in the process of writing that to Xi Jinping? I think he's looking at. I think he, what what I heard about the statement that Wang Yi wrote is it's heartfelt. It was like he basically tore, you know, tore himself apart. I'm like so bad. I, uh, you know, like I made all these stupid mistakes. You know, I'm I'm not worthy of your trust. I'm not worthy of your, um, uh, you know, all these things. You know, I don't know whether it's heartfelt or not. But he said all these things. Uh, you know, he really like digged into his heart and wrote this. You know, emotionally charged. I don't know. I'm I'm just interpreting from what I read. Uh, I assume it's emotionally charged, heartfelt, uh, repentance letter to Xi Jinping to say, I'm sorry, I was so bad. I uh, Please give me another chance. <laughs> I don't know. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> oh, oh, I have to laugh at that. All right, let me see. Repentance letter. There's no such thing. I mean, could I mean it's ridiculous. I mean, in in Western politics, could you imagine a, a minister 
Could you im imagine Joe Biden asking <laughs> uh, Anthony Blinken to write a repentance letter? <laughs> oh, it's just too funny. All right. Um, well, there aren't that many questions for me. Good. Uh, Mike Dixon, are there any women in senior CCP role? I think... No, there was there, there's no woman in Polybiro. Um, there was one in last in the last session in the 19th uh, CCP com commission committee. Uh, there's n none on the party side, but there's one woman uh, in the state council, I think. So, yeah. All right, from Matthew Dolman. Like, I don't know if you realize, but a number of your recent videos only have audio for the first few seconds. Then it's silent. I don't know. Uh, I I I don't know why. I'll have my editor to look into that. But pe when I when people told me that and I checked the video, I it was fine for me. I was able to play it and hear the audio throughout. I have no idea. Uh, do you guys know what's happening? Maybe you guys can give me some tips about what could could have what what might have been happened, what might be happening. Polar bear. Uh, anything about the three-way secret meeting held in northern China between Jinping, Jinping, Putin, and King? Hmm, very interesting indeed. Um. I'm just repeating what I heard. Uh, do I know anything more about it? No, I have not heard anything about it. But the person who disclosed that information is known to be uh, tipped with some insider's information uh, from within the CCP leadership from time to time. Sometimes the tips he was fed was true. Sometimes it's not true. Um, but that person does seem to have a good track record of releasing information that are credible and he is persistent and he's, he's, per, he persistently claimed that his, his information is, is, is accurate this time. So, all right. Um, okay. That seems to be it. Um. That's all. Okay. No more questions. That's easy for me. Oh, here's one. Dylan Thomas, 12321. Lei, if she trusted no one, how can he manage a complex economy or fight a war with the U.S., Japan, South Korea, India, and Australia. His military leaders must realize taking Taiwan is not worth the risk. His military leaders realize that. I mean, take a look at all these people, right, who who know firsthand that they 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 cannot wage a war. They uh, they know that. And Xi Jinping has been blinded because these people don't really tell him what's really going on. Uh, Xi Jinping doesn't really know the truth about his his military until now. I think until now, after seeing so many accidents and so much corruptions, I think he realizes his his troops are not ready. Um, so your question is, if he trusts no one, he thought he trusts them. It's not like he doesn't trust anyone. He he did trust them. It's just that a series of recent events. Um, made him realize that things weren't what they look on the surface. So he's mad, you know, but that's, but even we know how corrupt the PLA was. How could he not know, right? So he chose what he, I mean, on one hand, people fed him information that's not true. On the other hand, he chose what he wants to believe. Okay. All right. Um, oh, from Neset Gane, do you think she is going to make a dramatic move, like a war to hold on to power, knowing China is going downhill and backed to a corner? I'll talk about that maybe Thursday, because that's another 
topic. So with all these, uh, with so many heads rolling, <laughs> what's his plan for Taiwan? You know, that's the question. What's his plan for Taiwan? Is he is he still planning a military operation now that he sees the reality with uh, in the PLA? What's his plan? So I want to talk about that. Maybe this Thursday. Um, stay tuned. All right. <clears throat> From Dr. CZU. Does the overthrow of Xi mean the end of the CCP? I think not. The clans that have become extremely rich and powerful, just a different mafia boss. Uh, you're right. Um, people who don't oppose CCP but oppose Xi Jinping, I think it could be dangerous because they're the same and some could be even worse than him. I think Xi Jinping is um, like there's a psychiatrist that is ideological uh, is a, is, has ideological faith. He does believe in socialism or communism, com common prosperity. You know, he, to him, that's his idea. That's his vision. Um, but if if the, you know if they get rid of him, but replace him with some other mafia boss within the CCP, things could be even worse, right? Just like. Like if we go back to uh, pre-pandemic time or pre-Xi Jinping time, you know, under during Jiang Zemin's time and Hu Jintao's time, I mean, the CCP has infiltrated the West thoroughly, right? They have, but then we didn't know. I mean, at least Xi Jinping, whatever he's doing, you know, reminds the whole world what a, you know what is communist state is capable of doing. And he's very open about it. He's like, this is my idea. This is what I want China to to um, to be like. And this is what I'm doing. I'm, he's at least saying it. Whereas his predecessors are hiding it. But they have infiltrated the West effectively. So who's more dangerous? If, if you look at it from that perspective. All right. From how many lay, how many experienced generals will you think will be left after the purge? That's a good question. We'll address that next time. Uh, I just saw someone said Xi Jinping will quickly realize he has to stop somewhere, or he will bring down the entire PLA. Um, I mean, Xi Jinping really believes in the anti-corruption campaign, but does he know that it's entirely corrupt? You can wipe out the entire PLA if if you if you're serious about P, the anti-corruption effort. So here's a here's his dilemma: if he's if he really punishes everyone who's corrupt or who, anyone who has committed these um, you know these corrupt deeds, then he he has no one left. But if he isn't strict, if he is selective in taking down some people and not the others, then people aren't convinced. Then people would just figure out, oh, maybe he's taking down these people because he likes, he doesn't like them and he doesn't, he protects those because he likes them. So people will still try to, um, you know, people will try to go around the system, right? So he that way he cannot stamp out corruption. So there's this just no way he can he can get rid of corruption. Marco Paolo, you are doing a magnificent class teaching us so much. Thank you so much. Brava. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Vanket Lei, with the presentation you made, wondering why Xi Jinping is still adopting an assertive stance by deploying numerous ships and fighter jets a few days back. Did he not get enough hints that they would lose a war? Ah, that's, <laughs> that's a very legitimate question. I'll address that next Thursday. It's all it's a psycho psychological game. It's a psychological game that he's playing. Yeah. See, people who understand CCP, we could see through his tricks immediately why he does certain things. I'll give you a story. There was a, a an in during the Cultural Revolutions, during the heydays of Cultural Revolution, there was this uh, a guy who was an inmate. He was a political prison, kept in the prison. And I mean, a political prisoner, 
a prisoner of conscience, right? And he reads people's daily every day. He's educated. He reads people's daily every day. And one day in the 1970s, he suddenly said, Lin Biao, uh, who was Mao's chosen successor, he said, Lin Biao is finished. He's in trouble now. Now, Lin Biao is Mao's successor and then the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. I mean, the second in command. So people thought that this man was crazy. They said, well, what, what make you say that? I mean, you're crazy. There's no way. Um, including the prison guards, right? The, 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 the guy in charge of the prison. But then a few, few days later or a few weeks later, news was announced that, that he, um, that, that he was shot. I mean, his, he tried to, he and his family tried to escape China to Russia and, um, and then his airplane, um, had a crash, you know, he had a crash similar to, um, what happened to the Wagner head. Right. Uh, so, so, and then internally they had a, they had a, uh, they let the officials know what happened to him. So after that came out, people asked him, how did you know that ahead of time? They asked this um, political prisoner, so how did, you, how did you figure it out before we all knew, way ahead of us? And he said, well, I read people's daily every day. His name always appeared after Mao Zedong, right? Whenever they mentioned Mao Zedong, they will mention him. His name always appeared after Mao. But recently, suddenly, his name disappeared. They no longer mention his name. So I knew something happened. Something terrible has happened to him. It's as simple as that. <laughs> but it's very true. Yeah. Um, um, sometimes you could say it's hard to understand CCP politics. But sometimes, from our perspective, it's so easy because you know why they do certain things and how they think their logic. And so it's pretty, you know, straightforward uh, for us. All right. Uh, great analysis and work. Will the purge weaken PLA and CCP? Yes, absolutely. It will. Okay. All right. Let me see. Mitsu, the only way she can save anything is to dismantle the power of the party by giving the Carter Party owned businesses to worker owned with no central government. Yeah, the only way Xi Jinping can get over his, I mean, get, get himself out of this um, dangerous pred predicament is by dismantling the party, you know, ending the CCP uh, dynasty. That's the only way. Um, from Marsh Maz, Lei, do you, you have any comments on China's secret new cities? Well, what do you mean secret new cities? Um, uh, from Dari Xiao, Lei, will women ever be allowed in CCP? There are many CCP members who are women. Uh, yeah. Didn't Mao say that women holds up the half half of the sky? Women holds women hold up half of the sky. That's a Mao Zedong quote, and Joe Biden quoted him as well. So so yeah, there are a lot of CCP members. All right. All right. I'll take one question and I have to take a break to give my throat a break. From Anurak, uh, Sha Gupta. <laughs> Lei, will CCP oversee the breakup of China as we know it today? Will the CCP will not, are not in, the CCP, <laughs> the CCP will break up before China does. I've people have sent me video links about China is collapsing. China is dis, you know, is will will break up um, into a few smaller states. I think they're wrong. China will will not collapse, but the CCP regime will. So if anything, the CCP will break up before China does. So it will not be it will not be put in a position to oversee the breakup of China, right? 
All right. All right. Okay. That's all for tonight. I thank you very much for joining. Um, thank you. And I'll see you Thursday. Okay, bye-bye. Good night.